This is your. This woman just seems like a walking red flag. <laughs> Yikes. Um, we're going to get into a compilation of dating over 30. So strap in here, try not to let this woman's eyes scare the hell out of you, and uh, let's get into it. Let me roll the intro. Reminder to always do it for you. Don't do it for him, always do it for you. Even if you start doing it for him, remind yourself to do it for you. And here's what I mean. Yesterday, a man that I have gone on one date with and have been talking to ever since messaged me early afternoon, like two o'clock, and he was like, I just got off work. I think I'm gonna go to my ranch later this afternoon. He said, Do you have plans? I said, No, I don't have any plans. And I playfully was like, Are you inviting me? And he goes, Well, let me message you later this afternoon. If you feel like going, then we'll go. And I said, okay, cool. So here we are. It's again, like early two o'clock. So I'm like, okay, I have at least probably two hours. It's going to message me around four, maybe five. Maybe that was a big assumption on my part, but not relevant to the story. I get my stuff done. I get my work done. And then I'm like, okay, I can like freshen myself up a bit. I shave my armpits. I cut my nails, buy all my nails. Well, 5.30 rolls around and... I'm like, okay, I haven't heard from him. And at this point, I'm like, okay, the plans are all mine now. So I'm just going to take myself to the beach. I live within walking distance of the beach. I'm going to take my book. And I'm just going to do me. If he messages me, I've already changed my plans. So I go to the beach. I do my thing. I even message a friend who lives by. I'm like, hey, I'm down here if you want to come by. Friend comes by. And then we make plans for dinner. And then I'm walking away from the beach after sunset. And I'm like, wow, that was so funny that I, like, got all, like, pampered up thinking that it was for this guy, like shaving my armpits, cutting my nails, all of the things. But really I was walking away from the beach, just smiling and being like, I'm actually just so glad that I even did them for me. And I got my work done in time and I had time to take myself to the beach. So this is your reminder to when you start doing things for him, because we will naturally want to pamper ourselves and whatever, do it for you. Talk about it. Uh, well, it seems like you got played there. I assume that he invited somebody who was much younger and much attractive to uh, the ranch instead, and you sat on, you know, the beach reading your romance novel or whatever the hell you probably are into. But, yeah, no, you should be making yourself interesting for somebody that you're dating, um, of course. But, yeah. Uh like the cope the cope is real let's face it the cope's real i don't know what else to say <laughs> let's move on to the next it says why older women are jealous of younger women let's roll it let's talk about why older women are jealous of younger women oh no honey no we're not jealous of younger women at all i'm 60 I look better than you. I do. And I'm sexier. But it doesn't matter. Because I'm not competing. I don't compete for what those young girls are after. Any man I get comes after me. I'm not in the crab barrel any longer. Nor do I care. Been married three times. I don't need that, honey. We get over that after a while. We mature. And we age like fine wine. Men know that. <laughs> All ages, by the way. Not just the old ones. Okay, because this is... No, 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 no. Oh, my God. Uh, again, cope seems to be the main topic of discussion here. Uh, no, 60-year-old uh, women are definitely not a <laughs> fine wine. Um, they have been left out in the cellar and no longer smell like wine. They are starting to uh, just absolutely stink up the place. I just don't get it. Like the level of delusion to think that an older woman is more, or an older woman is more attractive than a younger woman. Just keep telling yourself that. I'm sure it's going to make your situation better. And after being married three times, 
Um, uh, yeah, just stay single. <laughs> Make me want to barf. Either way, holy lordy, what is it with the... <laughs> Sorry, this compilation is uh, actually surprising me. Like, all of these women should really keep their frickin' heads far away from their phone. I could land a frickin' jet on that forehead. Let's see what it's about. <laughs> how men operate. They put money into things that they value and things that they care about and things that they love. Take a man, for example, who enjoys going golfing. He's not going to show up to the country club with a busted, rusted golf club set. He's going to show up with the best golf clubs, not only the best golf clubs, but he's going to show up with the whole thing, right? The shirt, the hat, the shoes, everything, because he loves it. He values it. And so he puts his time and money into it. Take, for example, a man who cares about cars. He's not going to come pick you up or go anywhere for that matter with a dirty, disgusting, um, messy car. He's going to always have his vehicle clean, waxed. He's going to have his wheels detailed. He's going to have every maybe the new accessories and the inside is always going to look fresh. If men value and love something, if they care about it, they put money into it. If they don't, they don't. When men tell you who they are, listen, don't make excuses for them. Oh, well, he's just broke. I've had both guys with money and guys that didn't have money take me out and have wonderful dates. If they want to, they will. If something is valuable to you, you will spend the time and the money to make the effort. You have to Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Those broke guys probably weren't broke and they just didn't want to spend money on you. Let's face it. And the rich guys that do, I don't get it. Um, did you run toy cars on her forehead the entire time? I bet that would have been a wonderful experience. Oh, I gotta stop. I gotta stop. The savage in me is just coming out. But uh, for real, <laughs> let's see what this next clip's about. to condition yourself for the life that you say you want if you want to be married or at least be in a healthy committed mutually monogamous and stable relationship then you're going to have to let go of your addiction to anxiety some of us are addicted to the anxiety of dating some of us like the uncertainty of not knowing like is he going to call today did he text me you know we have a date planned for today, but I haven't heard from him yesterday. Like, is he is he gonna is he really gonna show up? I mean, do I get dressed? Do I not go? You're addicted to the anxiety. And when you find a healthy, committed, mutually monogamous partner that wants to be with you and is intentional about you, you are going to find yourself bracing for impact, ready for that recoil. And when it doesn't come, when they're just consistent and they show up and they keep the dates and they're just nice and kind and reliable and dependable, that is going to probably scare you because you don't know what to do with this because it's everything you said you ever wanted, but you don't even know how to act because you're like, wait, where's the chaos? Don't confuse chaos for passion don't confuse panic for butterflies you know condition yourself to want the guy that is healthy for you to want the guy that is consistent to want the guy that's reliable to want the guy that's safe some of us say we want it but we're not conditioned for it that's why we've met good guys and we've thrown them back into the dating pool you probably met, you know, one or two of your husbands already and you just throw them back into the dating pool because at that point in your life, you didn't know how to receive peace and serenity. So let's work on that now. So that way, when you find your partner, you can receive him and accept him. Some of this is about acceptance. You know, I met my husband when I was 37. We got married when I was 38. We had our son when I was 39. I am 41. I will be 42 in a couple of weeks. And I thank goodness that I met my husband when I did because maybe if I had met him sooner than, you know, I had, I probably would have thrown him back into the dating pool, being addicted to toxicity. So just, just you know, Food for thought, you know what I'm saying? Like, just condition yourself to want to where the good guy is, is stable and attractive, where you like stability.
I probably threw away two or three husbands dating in chaos. Thankfully, I came to my senses. It's time for you to get to your senses. Yeah, she came to her senses when she finally reached the age of 42, and now she's telling her young audience to not make the same mistakes as her and stop living a life of chaos and anxiety. Instead, try to, you know, chase peace and see that the people that are um, worth your time um, are not worth throwing back because you just don't know what to do when somebody treats you right. Wow, okay. There was a lot of woo-woo kind of language in there, but it's her advice. <laughs> you know, they chase the chaos, they chase Chad, and then what happens? They're dating in their late 30s again. <clears throat> but either way, addicted to that anxiety. Yeah, I think that's fair. I think that's pretty damn fair. Fair point. I'm going to wrap things up here. I've almost been rambling on for 12 minutes now. I appreciate you guys listening. Always do your due diligence so you don't end up dealing with that. All right? Okay. I'll catch you in the next batch of videos. Thank you for watching. Have a good one. Bye for now.